Uh, so just a quick announcement. This is the last substantive lecture of the year. So um, content for the exam ends on today's lecture. Uh, in tomorrow, I'm going to hopefully uh, return your quiz two and take up quiz two and then tell you about the exam. Uh, I'm pretty sure quiz two will be done tomorrow. Um, I'll be up late marking, but I think it'll be done. Uh, so far, people have been doing pretty well in quiz two. Right? So on, on average, the marks are pretty good, uh, which is nice to see. Um, I guess we'll just get on with this and um, wrap this up. Oh, there's no lecture on Monday uh, because I stupidly committed to do something on Monday that overlaps with both courses that I teach on Monday. Uh, so there's no course on Monday, no lecture on Monday. All right. Uh, we're talking about reading and writing uh, data. Um, so a lot of the data you have to deal with when you're reading or writing to a file is formatted somehow. Um, many files are line oriented, so that is each line of the file contains some information. Um, and that information is formatted or organized some way. Right? Many other types of files are formatted or have a structure, but they're not line oriented. Right? So most programming languages are not line oriented. Right? So you know, like your Java program or your C program, each line of code might span multiple lines of code, might sp span multiple lines, um, and your program may or may not be meaningful uh, depending on how you've written it. Right? So languages like, uh, if you've done any web programming, you've almost certainly come across JSON, XML, or HTML. Those are all structured uh, or formatted languages. They're not line oriented. Right? So generally stuff that's not for, uh, not line oriented um, is much more difficult to parse uh, than the stuff we're interested in reading in this course. Right? And so if that, that link there, if you're interested, uh, takes you to um, a website that describes uh, at a high level how parsing algorithms work in computer science. Um, you generally don't do, so it used to be the case that parsing was considered very important uh, in an undergraduate uh, computing science degree. Um, and so you do it quite a lot. Um, nowadays, it tends only to be done in a compiler's course, uh, which is in fourth year for you guys if you want to take that course. And it's not offered every year here either. Um, so normally, you don't do much parsing anymore. Um, and if you do, it's typically in compilers. So we want to look at line-oriented formatted data. So there's an example of this. Uh, there's a password file on every Linux or Unix um, system. Right, so it's called, it's in uh, root etc password. Um, and it's, it, in the old, old days, it really did contain user passwords. Um, which if you think about it, it's kind of nuts, right? <laughs> you don't want your passwords to show up in plain text in a file that anybody can read. Uh, so it's no longer the case that the uh, passwords appear in this file. Instead, it's basic information about users of the system. Uh, and it is plain text, it's one record per line. So that is each user gets one line in the file, um, and each uh, record has seven fields separated by a colon. Right? So for example, that's an, uh, right there is an example of one line out of a password file. Right? So it's split up into seven um, fields, right? and they're separated by colons. Right? So the first field is the username. Right? The second field used to be the password. Uh, nowadays, it's just the letter X. Right? So in other words, your password's not held in this file anymore. It's held in a different file and it's encrypted. Right? So you can't, act, even if you can see it, you can't actually use it for anything. Right? These two numbers are the user ID and the group ID of the user. This field here uh, is allowed to contain any information except for a colon. So this is the user info. So it's just miscellaneous information. Right, so it could be the user's actual name, it might be their email address, it might be their phone number, it might be their office number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, it could be anything. Not allowed to contain a colon. Right. The next field is the user's home directory, also not allowed to contain a colon. Right, so that's a fact in Unix and, uh, well, Bash anyway, uh, sorry, Linux anyway. Um, a user's home directory cannot contain a colon because in the password file, colons are used to separate fields. Right. So if you have a colon in, a, uh, in your home directory, it gets, uh, you can't parse the uh, password file correctly. And then finally, the last field is the shell that the user gets when they log in. Right. So here it's the bash shell. Could be something else. Right. So we want to be able to read um, records that look like this, or files that look like this. Um, 
So I can show you on my computer what my password file looks like. Right, so you can just cat the password file, and you see there's a whole bunch of users. Right? Most of these users are actually uh, belong to system processes, right? So they're operating system level users. Right? Uh, my user account's right here, right? And I made another account for Homer Simpson down here. Right? And everything else is um, the root, that's the root user. Uh, everything else is some sort of operating system, is a user associated with some sort of operating system process. Okay, so if you've got this file that consists of lines, then one way to parse the information in the file is to read it in line by line and then break up each line into the uh, relevant tokens. Right? So you can read the file using fgets, right? That's easy, that reads in a line. Right? And then process each line using strtok, right? The tokenizer, which might be appropriate in this case, right? Or scanf, right? So scanf is like um, f scanf, right, which I showed you, um, so is similar to fscanf that I showed you the other day. Okay, so I'm going to try to read this file here, one line at a time, and I'm going to try to get the relevant fields for each user um, in C, right, so I'm going to write a little C program that does this. I'm going to use strtok to try to read, uh, to try to split each line into tokens, right, which makes sense because it looks like um, the colon separates uh, fields um, that are in, uh, the fields for each user. Right, so here's our little program called password that's gonna read in a password, uh, that's gonna read in that file and try to print out information about each user. So I'm gonna define a structure called record. So this is just the information for each user, right? So every user has a username as a string Right, they've got a password, which is just the letter X in this case, right? But that's also a string, right? There's a user ID, which is an unsigned integer, right? Then there's the group ID, also unsigned integer. There is this user information field, which historically is called the GCOS field. So I'm just gonna call it that, right? Then there's the home dir and there's the uh, login shell, right? Which are all strings, right? So notice here, I'm just storing these as pointers to car. So when I uh, try to read in something, I'm gonna have to allocate memory for the string uh, so that I can actually represent the string, right? So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna call this function called copy string, right? So copy string copies in the string pointed at by src, right? And it copies it into uh, a string. So here's our first pointer to a pointer, right? So what I wanna do here is I want to allocate space for the username, for all the strings in the structure, right? So for username, password, gcodes, home, during shell, I want to use malloc to dynamically allocate array for me to store the string in, right? Now when I do that, I'm gonna end up writing something like, uh, if I have a structure called s, right? I'm gonna end up writing something like s dot username uh, equals uh, malloc something, right? So in other words, I want to assign, oh, sorry, malloc, right? So I actually want to change or assign a value to this pointer username, right? Okay, now remember what happens in C. If I actually want to change, right, a, uh, or I want to store, uh, change what's stored in a variable owned by somebody else, Right? then I need to pass in a pointer to that something else. Right? So I wanna change a pointer that's in a structure somewhere. Right? So in order to actually do this assignment, I need a pointer to a pointer. Right? So dest, right? that's a pointer to the destination string. Right? I need a pointer to that pointer right? so that I can assign a new value to that pointer. So how does this work? Well, I need to know how long is that string, right? So I just use string length to get the length of the string, right? Now I need to allocate a, an array big enough to hold that string, right? So I'm gonna malloc an array of length len, right? Time size of car, but size of car is one, so I don't have to worry about that, right? And then I wanna store that pointer 
uh, in dest, right? But remember, dest is a pointer to a pointer, so I actually want to store it in star dest. And that will assign a pointer to that will sorry that will assign a pointer to the dynamically allocated array uh, to the object that's actually pointed at by dest. Right. And now I can just go ahead and copy the string from the source string into the destination string. Right again, dest is a pointer to a pointer. Right, string copy expects just a pointer to car, so I have to dereference dest once to get a pointer to car, right? Because dest is a pointer to a pointer to car. Right? Uh, and th so that's how you copy, uh, so that's how you dynamically allocate a new array, assign it to a pointer owned by somebody else, and then copy contents into that string, right? Uh, any questions about that? It's a little bit odd the first time you see it, right? Because you're getting a pointer to a pointer, Right? But all you have to remember is that in C, if I want to change a variable owned by somebody else, I need a pointer, right? So if I want to change a pointer owned by somebody else, I need a pointer to that pointer, right? And that's all that's happening here. Any questions? All right, so parse record, this is the function that actually tries to uh, parse one line of the file, right? So we read in one line of the file using fgets. That gives me a string. I'm now going to try to read that string, uh, splitting it into fields using strtok. Right? So I make a record to store all my results in. Right? So remember, a record is just a string, a string, an unsigned int, an unsigned int, a string, a string, a string. Right? And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call strtok to try to read in the first uh, token on the line. Right, and the first token is the username. Right? So when you use strtok, the first time you call the function, you pass in a pointer to the string that you want to tokenize. Right? And then you pass in a, a string containing the delimiter characters. Right? So our fields are split by, or separated by colons. So I pass in a string that's equal to the colon. Right? Now string tok will go into the string uh, and it'll insert, uh, it'll try to break the string up. Uh, it'll try to give me the first token in the string s and it returns that as a pointer, right? So that's your, so it returns a pointer to the string, um, or a pointer to the first character in the string, right? If it's not null, then it worked. Uh, sorry, if it's null, then it failed, right? strtok -okay failed to find any, uh, failed to find a token in the string. So I'm just gonna return the empty record in this case, right? So this uh, function just returns when it can't read in any extra information. All right, so if this works, uh, that's actually a pointer to the start of the first token in the string. So remember how strtok -okay works? Uh, I need an example, right? So if my string is, so I guess the first is the, first is the username. So let's do John, right? And then there's a colon, right? So when you run strtok -okay on this string here, right? Nope, hang on, sorry, that was the phone. <coughs> right? STRTOK looks for the uh, first character that's not equal to a colon, right? The delimiter, so it finds the J, right? And then it keeps on going until it finds the next character equal to a colon. So it finds that colon, right? It remembers that it found the first non colon character there, right? replaces the colon with the uh, null term, with the um, null character, right? So it comes in and puts a, the null character there, right? And so when it returns this pointer, you get the string John, right? So that's how this works, right? Okay, so I've got that pointer here. I wanna copy John into my record, right? So I just call copy string, right? That's the string to copy, right? And now I need to pass in a pointer uh, to a string, right? So I need to pass in the address of our username, right? Our username is a string. Well, it's a pointer to car, right? I want to change that pointer so that it now points at some actual memory. So I pass in the address of our username, 
right? That's a pointer to a pointer, right? And then copy string is going to assign something to our username for me, right? It's going to assign me the uh, whatever uh, is returned by malloc. Okay, so that reads the first part of that string, right? the first part of the um, of, of the record, right? And now I can just go to the next part of the record, right? So I just call strt okay again, right? Now remember when you call it the second, third, fourth, and fifth time, right? When you, uh, as long as you're processing the same string, you always pass in null, right? And now it'll remember to process that string there, right? Again, we're looking for uh, whatever separates uh, the colons, right? So inside this thing here, there's an X and then a colon, right? Because that's the password field, right? So how does this work? Right, it advances this pointer until it finds, uh, sorry, it starts at the end of the string um, and advances the pointer until it finds the first non-delimiter character, so that's the X. Right, and then it keeps on going until it finds the next colon. Right, and so there's the colon, it replaces the colon, uh, sorry, yeah, the colon with the null terminator. Right, and then it returns this pointer. Right, so we have the string x now. Right, so I just copy that string again. Right, and you just keep on going. Right, you just keep on repeating this process um, each time. Right, now for the user ID, call strt ok again. Right, uh, the user ID is an in unsigned integer, so I have to use a to i. Right, to convert the string to an integer. Right, store that in uh, the uid field in the record. Right. The GID, that's the group ID, also an integer, so I do the same thing, right? Call strt ok, right? Convert the return string to an integer using a to i, store it in GID, right? GCOS is a string, so you just repeat the uh, process again, right? Call strt ok, copy the string into the uh, GCOS field of the record. Right, and then finally the homder um, and the shell. Right, they're both strings, so the process just repeats itself all over again. Right, and then you can return the record. Right, and now your record will now have, assuming you get to this point, right, that will be now pointing at some dynamically allocated memory that contains a string. Right, that's pointing at some dynamically allocated memory that point, contains a string. There's the user ID, the group ID, a string, a string, and a string. Right, and now you can print out the record. So printing the record is just printing out the individual fields, right? So username followed by a string, password followed by a string, and so on and so on and so forth, right? The main function just opens up the file to be read. So this is gonna read my password file, right? So there's the location of my password file, right? I wanna open up the file for reading, right? Uh, if I get back a null pointer, it failed to open up the password file for whatever reason, right? And we exit. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to read in one line at a time. Here I'm using a string of length 100, so I can read in at most 99 characters, right? Um, which is fine for my particular password file, right? It may not be fine for every password file, but I know it works for mine, right? I just use fgets to read in the file one line at a time, right? Storing the each line in buff, right? And then I just parse buff each time, right? and then print the contents, right? And then of course, don't forget to clean up, right? So close the uh, file. I guess you should deallocate the strings in the record, but this is the main function anyway, so it's gonna free that memory um, regardless. All right, so it looks like it should work. I mean, it seems sensible anyway. Uh, what happens when we actually run it, right? So there's your file that we're gonna try to read. Okay, so when we run it, and go up to the top, it generates a lot of output because there's a lot of users. Um, everything seems fine here, right? So we have the root user, password is X, uh, the group and user IDs are zero, right? These seem sensible, right? The next user seems sensible, 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 right? Everything looks good um, until you get to Hopefully I don't miss it. 
username shell. If I miss it, somebody shout out something. <laughs> that looks a bit weird. Uh, home disk. Somewhere, it's going to, oh, there we go. That's messed up. Right? Uh, so that's not a home directory. That's actually the name of a, an executable program. Right? That's actually the shell for that user there, or perhaps that user there. Right? So let's look at UUIDD. Right? So grep, exit. Password uh, for U U, where was it? U U I D D. Oops, I guess I did that backwards. U uh, U I D D. There we go. Username, password, ID, ID. Oh, wait, there's an empty field there. Right, the shell. Or the home directory is run UUID, the shell is that, right? And when I print out the record, right, that's the, uh, that thing there is supposed to be the shell, right? That thing there is supposed to be the home dir, right? And the GCOS field is supposed to be empty, right? Uh, and you'll, write, you'll see the same thing happens uh, whenever you read in a user that has an empty GCOS field. So here is an example record with an empty GCOS field. Right? So when I start to tokenize this uh, string using strtok, right, s starts pointing up here, right, finds the colon here, so it replaces that with um, the null terminator, right, and returns s, so we get jsmith. Right? Next time you call it, starts at the x, replaces that colon with the null terminator, returns a pointer to the x. Right, then the 1001, the 1000, and now we get to this empty field here, right? So when you get to the 1000, right, you end up with that. strtok replaces the first delimiter character with the null terminator, right? It doesn't replace them all, it replaces the first. So we get that, right? The next time you call strtok, it starts at, the, at this null terminator here, and it parses the string until it finds the first non-delimiter, right? So it skips over the colon and now it goes to the um, root directory here, right? So when it tries to read in the GCOS field, it actually ends up reading in the, um, the user directory, right? So in other words, um, the way we've used strtok, it can't handle empty fields, right? It just skips over them and it copies the string, or it copies the information into the wrong field. So strtok does not by itself uh, deal with empty fields, right? And what ends up happening is you end up calling strtok too many times, and that's what produces all that junk that you see um, in the output, right? It's because you called strtok too many times and it's gone past the end of the string, right? Uh, and read in some junk, right? So anywhere that you saw those funny characters, they're not actually in the password file, right? They were caused by strtok going past the end of the string, and reading in um, some uh, stuff that it wasn't supposed to, right? And that's why you get that strange output. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? Well, it looks like you have to try to detect, is there an empty uh, field, right? So that's what password two tries to do. So password two is the same, right? We got our record here. Right, we've got copy string here. Uh, I've now got an, a separate function here called uh, is gcos empty, right? And it starts with a pointer to a string, or I guess a string, right? And that's the string where, uh, that's gonna be the string that you get when you parse the, um, the field in front of it. Right, so the way this one's gonna work is um, what you can get to here. So when I get to here, I know that the next thing after I read in this field is supposed to be the GCOS field, so I'm gonna test is the GCOS field empty, right? The way I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna look at the length of the string here, right? 
And then I'm going to look at the next character after it. Right? So I want to check, is there a colon sitting after this field? Right? Because if there is, then I know that there's, a, there's an empty GCOS field. Right? So in other words, I'm trying to find this double colon right? while I'm parsing the string. Right? All right, so how does this work? So I'm going to get the length of the string. Right? Now remember, we're going to start at this situation here. Right? So the length of the string is 4. Right? So I'm going to assert, assuming that I've done this all correctly, right? if I look at the character at S L E N, right, that should be the null terminator. Right? So if S is 4, the length of S is 4, there's 0, there's 1, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4. Right? So that's the null terminator or it had better be the null terminator. If it's not, I've done something wrong, right? And now I'm going to look at the character after that, right? So that's at length plus one, right? And I'm going to check, is that equal to the colon, right? If it's equal to the colon, I'm going to return true, so the GCOS field is empty, right? Otherwise, I'm going to return false. The GCOS field is not empty. Right? So now when I parse the record, right, read in the username, exact same way as before, right? Read in the password, exactly the same way as before. Right? Read in the user ID, exactly the same as before. Now, read in the group ID, right? exactly the same as before. Right? Now, call is gcos empty right? with that string. Right? So remember the string here that's returned by SQRT OK, that's pointing at the first character in the group ID field. Right? So now I'm going to check, is the next field empty? Right? And if it is, or if it's not empty, I can go ahead and just copy in. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. If it's not empty, right, I can go ahead and call strt OK to get the GCOS field now. Right? And then copy the string uh, into our GCOS. Right? If that's false, so if the GCOS field is empty, I'm just going to copy in the empty string into the GCOS field. So this one looks ahead. You can also write this so that it looks back. Right? So when you try to read in the GCOS field, you can look backwards and see, is there a colon sitting before the start of the GCOS field? If there is, then the GCOS field was empty, and you've actually read in something else. Right? So you can look forwards or backwards. It doesn't matter which way. Right? I've written this by looking forwards. Uh, you, can, you can also write this by looking backwards. Right? Everything else is the same. Right? And now if you run this version of the uh, program, Uh, it appears that everything does, in fact, work, right? You don't get any funny output. This user, which caused problems before, not causing any problems, right? And the GCOS field is actually empty, which is nice, right? Um, and so now this appears to have fixed the problem, right? So it can handle the empty GCOS field, right? Can it handle empty fields in general? The answer is no, right? You'd have to rewrite the function uh, to process arbitrarily empty fields. All right, so instead of using uh, SQRT OK, you can do this in a different way, right? So I can use SScanf to split the string up, right? Now, SScanf, scanf, and fscanf, they all work the same way. fscanf works on files. sscanf works on strings. So you can scan a formatted string and extract information out of the string using this function here, right? So I told you the basics and how to use fscanf. Everything I told you applies to sscanf. Now I'm going to tell you more about using both fscanf and fscanf. Right. So like fscanf, it returns, fscanf returns the number of tokens successfully converted. Right. It returns zero if it can't convert the first token. Right. Okay, so there are, I showed you the integer conversion, the, the double conversion, the string conversion. It turns out there's a bunch of other conversions. Right. The way all of these um, scanf functions work, uh, they consume and discard all leading white space characters. Right? So when you ask it to parse a string or a file, right, most of the conversions eat up all the white space and then tries to convert the, what follows after the white space. Right? If the white space is meaningful to you, you have to do something else. Right? So in particular, you have to use either percent %c or this funny square bracket notation that I'll explain in a moment. 
right? Otherwise, remember that it's always going to consume white space before it tries to convert something. Right? Now, when I showed you fscanf the other day, right, I did tell you that the way I was using it was slightly unsafe because when I read in a string, I don't say how long the string or what the maximum length string I should read in. Right? I just say read it, write in a string, read in a string, and write it to this pointer or write it to this array right, until you see the null terminator. Right? We know that's bad. So is there a way to use the scanf uh, fun functions and specify the width? The answer is yes, you can do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Right. Percent %s and this funny square bracket conversion, they always store the null terminator for you. Right? So if you read in a string, you always get the null terminator. Right? All right, so let's look at the square bracket notation first. Right? So percent square bracket some set of characters, right? That's the conversion that matches a non-empty sequence of characters uh, that are found in the set. Right? So it'll match any non-empty sequence of characters from that set, right? So percent square bracket ABC will match any non-empty string made up of the letters A, B, and C, right? So A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 it'll match that, right? A, B, C, it'll match that. Right, any sequence of A's and A's, lowercase A's, B's, and C's, it will match that and convert. Right? As soon as it finds a character that's not in the set ABC, right, it'll stop the conversion at that point. Right? Often it's easier to specify the characters you don't want to match. So caret set matches a non-empty sequence of characters not in the set of characters. Right? So caret ABC matches any non-empty string that does not include A, B, or C. Right? Okay, so matching a string that contains spaces is problematic. Right? So if you're reading in something and you know there's spaces in the string, you can't use percent %s. Right? Because percent %s sucks up all of the spaces in front of the string and then it stops when it, when it finds the first space. Right? So that's how percent %s works. Right? So you can't use percent %f, so I have to do something else. Right? If you're trying to read in a string that contains spaces in it, uh, it's probably the case that the string you're reading in is uh, delimited somehow. Right? Either there's, uh, normally it's, uh, well often it'll be double quote delimited. Right? So if you have a string that has spaces in it, inside your file there'll be a double quote, some string with spaces in it, then a closing double quote. Right? Or some other character that delimits the string. Right? Uh, so how do you match that? Right? So how do I read in a string that matches that? Right? Well, it turns out you can use that funky notation there for your conversion. Right? So let's take this apart one step at a time. Right? So another, I want to read in a string that looks like the following. Right? So it starts with a double quote, uh, has some letters in it, and some spaces. Right? So has some spaces. Right? And I would like to consume that entire string as one unit. Right? I can't use percent %s because it'll stop here, right? uh, which is unfortunate. Right? The underscores are actually spaces in that example. Right? So I claim that you can do the following. Right? All right, so I claim that's your conversion string. So let's take that conversion string uh, apart one piece at a time. Right? So the opening double quote, that's the double quote that indicates the start of the conversion string, right? That's the end of the conversion string, right? If I want to match the literal character double quote, I have to escape that double quote, right? So escape the double quote, right? And so that'll match the double quote character, right? So that'll match the opening double quote, right? Step two this funny square bracket notation, right? So I'm going to use the caret, so not, right? I'm going to escape the double quote again, right? So this will match any non-empty string that does not have a double quote on it, right? So starting, so that's matched by the first escaped double quote, right? So that's matched by that, right? The rest of that thing there says match anything that's not a double quote, right? And so that matches everything up to there, right? Up to the S, right? 
Okay, so that's your percent square bracket not. Right? Match any, any string that does not contain the double quote. Right? Now I need to consume that last double quote. Right? So I have to escape the double quote again. Right? So match the closing double quote. Right? And then finally, that last double quote, that, oops, sorry, that's going to screw up. Right? That last double quote closes the entire uh, string there. Right? So if you're ever asked to parse in a string that's got spaces in it, this is one way to do it. Right? Hopefully your string is delimited by some sort of uh, delimiter character. Right? If it's not, it becomes a lot more complicated. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at scanf demo uh, so that you can actually see uh, this function uh, scanf in uh, action. Right. All right, so I've got three strings or three arrays that I can read a string into. Right. I've got two unsigned ints that I can read an unsigned int value into. Right. Okay, I'm going to start. So scanf, I'm going to try to scan a string, so that's the string to be scanned, right? That's the empty string. I want to try to interpret whatever is in that string as a string, right? So using percent %s. And then I want to store whatever's in that string inside the string str1, right? You can't scan an empty string. There's nothing in the string, right? So you can't scan it with percent %f, it won't work. Right? And so the value of n that you get back, right? Uh, is going to be minus one in this case. Right. So let me just run that program. Right. So the first thing it prints out is n equals minus one. Right. So uh, right. the number of conversions that succeeded in that call to scanf. Right. At most, one conversion can succeed here. Right. Because I only have one conversion here. Right? Because that's the first conversion and it failed, right, you get back minus one. Right? So you can't scan an empty string because percent %s consumes all space. Right? Well, I guess that's the next one. So the blank string, this doesn't work either. Right? Because percent %s consumes all the leading space in this string. So it eats up all that. Right? And now it's left with the empty string, which we know doesn't work. Right? So you get back minus one in that case too, right? The conversion did not succeed, right? str1 is not a valid string. Okay, what about a non-blank string? So I have the string abc, right? Can I convert it or can I convert the contents of it to a single string using percent %s, right? And the answer is yes, right? Because that's just a string, it's got no spaces in it, right? So it'll read in the abc and store that in str1. Right, appending the null terminator to the end. Right? So now when you print out the number of conversions, you get one, right? one successful conversion. The string should be ABC. And that's what we get. Right? <coughs> okay. Same example, this time I'm going to try to, I'm going to use this syntax here. Where is this uh, on this? Hang on just a second here. There's supposed to be a lecture slide that describes this. Did I miss it? I must have flown right by it. Oh, here, that line there. Uh, you can specify the maximum field width um, by putting in an integer number after the percent sign in your conversion. Right? So if I write percent two, right? then at most that conversion will consume two characters from the string. Right. So here, right, I'm going to try to parse this string right, using that conversion. Right. So percent %2s means consume at most two characters and interpret it as a string. So in this case, it's going to read the a and the b. Right. And it'll store a, b in string one. Right. It's going to stop after the b. Right. So it's going to leave the c um, as on the input. Right? So when you print this out, you get uh, n equals one, right? one successful conversion, right? and the string will be ab in this case, because it stops after two characters. Right? 
Next example. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, A, B, C, X, Y, Z with a space between the A, B, C and the X, Y, Z, right? So I'm gonna try to interpret this with this uh, formatting string here, right? So percent two S, right? So convert the string, right? Consuming at most two characters, right? And treat that as a string, so I'm gonna get A, B. Now I have a percent s, right? So the percent two point, uh, the percent two s stops after the b. So now, oops, sorry. Now I'm at the c, right? The next conversion, percent s, starts at the c and goes until there's a space, right? It doesn't read everything else in the string, right? It stops when it hits white space. So now you just get the c for the second string, right? And two successful conversions, right? One for percent two s the second one for percent s. Right, so two successful conversions. Right, the first string is a, b. The second string is the c. Right, it's not c space x, y, z. Right. Okay, what happens if I scan a, I don't put in those, uh, the maximum width or the, ma the number of characters to read in. Right, if I scan this as percent %s%s, percent %s, it tries to read this as two separate strings, right? stopping uh, whenever it sees white space. Right? So it gets the ABC, right? stops there because there's white space. The second percent %s right, consumes any leading white space, so it eats that space. Then it consumes the rest of the string until it reaches the end of the string or another space. Right, so you, it eats up the x, y, z and converts the x, y, z. Right, so again, two successful conversions. This time you have a, b, c and x, y, z. Okay, now I've got a, b, c, space one, space x, y, z. Yep? Doesn't you get a space in the end, doesn't it have space does it? Here. If I do that. Uh, that space there means, uh, oh, sorry, that's not what I want, hang on. That space there, uh, if you read the documentation, it'll tell you it will consume all the space, all spaces up to the uh, next conversion. But will it still have it if it consumes it? Uh, if, it if you don't have it, so, oh yes. Yeah, so because, um, because of the way percent %s works, right, per, the percent %s conversion always consumes space. Right? It consumes all the leading space. Right? Percent C and the square brackets, they don't. Right? So if you want to include the spaces, or if you have something and there's a space in it, right, um, and you're gonna use percent C, that's when you put in the space here. To suck up all the spaces. Yeah. Okay, next string here, A, B, C, one, X, Y, Z. Right? So here I'm gonna read it in as a string. Percent U is unsigned int and then percent %s, so string, unsigned int, uh, string, right? So that'll read in a, b, c, then a one, then an x, y, z. Notice that when I store the unsigned int, right, I have to pass in a pointer, right? Uh, the, all of your arguments after the formatting string are pointers, right? So for strings, you just pass in a pointer to the first character in the string, which is normally just the name of the array, right? But for integer or floating or numeric values, right, typically you pass in the address of a variable that holds the value, right? So I'm gonna store this in x1, right? x1's not a pointer, right? SDR1's a pointer, right? It's a pointer to the first character in that array. x1's not a pointer, right? I have to pass in a pointer to x1 so that scanf can write into x1, right? So I need to pass in the address of x1 here. Right, uh, right there. Right, so this will give you three successful conversions and it will give you um, the expected values. Right, so three successful conversions. First string is ABC, second string is XYZ, and the, uh, the unsigned integer value is the one. Okay, the next one illustrates the square brackets. Right, so here I've got the string made up of lowercase ABCs, right, followed by uppercase ABCs, right? So if I want to split this into two strings, lowercase and uppercase, right? I can consume 
everything uh, that matches a lowercase character, right? So that eats up all of those, right? Followed by a string that matches, uh, that contains an A, B, or C, right? Sorry, followed by a string made up of only capital A, capital B, or capital Cs, right? So that eats up the rest of that string there. Right? Uh, and so you should get um, two strings, two successful conversions, and the two separate strings. So two conversions, the lowercase string here and the uppercase string here. Finally, the last one. This is an example where I try to read in a string with spaces, right, right there. Right. So I've got a colon, then a hundred, then a colon, then a string that's double quoted that has spaces in it, right? Then another string that has no spaces in it, right? And so now I'm going to play that trick up there. So my formatting string here, right, there's the string that I want to read. So I'm going to try to consume a colon, right, to match the opening colon, right. Then an unsigned int to match the 100, right. Then a colon to match the second colon. Then this uh, funny thing here, right, which is in the lecture slides that matches a double quoted delimited string. Then the colon, so colon here, right? And then the final string uh, right there. Right? So I'm going to read the integer into x1, and I'll read the two strings into str1 and str2. So if this works, I should get three successful conversions. Right? And you do. Right? So three conversions, the number is 100. The first string, read incorrectly. Right? Second string, also read correctly. Okay, so all of the scanf functions work the same way, right? So if you're using fscanf, you can use it the exact same way, right? If you're just using regular scanf, again, you can use it the same way. If scanf reads uh, standard input. Oh, all right, I went too far. Where'd I go? Uh, okay, so password three. So I'm gonna try to process that password file. This time using fscanf. Right? Now remember, when I used strtok, I have to call that function over and over and over again. Right? Here, I might be able to, hmm, here I might be able to read in everything in one shot. Right? So I'm just going to say the maximum length of any field is 64 characters. I don't know if that's true, right? but that's what I'm going to assume. Right? So the 64 characters includes the null terminator, so I can read in at most 63 characters. Right? And I'm going to read in a string. Whoa, sorry. Right? So read in a string uh, of up to 63 characters made up of anything that's not a colon. Right? So that's going to be the username. Right? Followed by a colon. Right? Followed by a string of up to 63 characters that does not include a colon. Right? Followed by a colon followed by unsigned int, followed by a colon, followed by unsigned int, sorry, followed by a colon, right? Followed by a string, a non-empty string, up to 63 long, does not contain a colon. Colon, another string, colon, another string, right? And I can just write those straight into the record. So I can write those straight into our username, our password. Oh, I can write that into the straight in because I malloc space for them here. Right. So I actually allocate space dynamically here for them. Oh wait, it's, t it's end of class. Right. So if you run this program, uh, you'll see that this almost works as well. Right. The problem is these conversions here, they will not match an empty string. So if you have an empty field, you've got a colon beside a colon, the string in between them is empty. So this will also fail in the same way that strtok failed. Right. Password four shows you how to do it uh, and deal with the space, uh, deal with the empty space, uh, the empty G-Code field. Uh, 